What up, though? Welcome back to the Free Game Producer Podcast. We got a very, very special guest in the building, dope producer. I've listened to his work over the years. He's produced for artists like T.I., Young Dro, Trey Songs, to name a few, the whole Grand Hustle Camp. We got Stroud in the building. How you doing, sir? I'm good. What about yourself, man? Bless, man. Bless. So wonderful, thankful wonderful. for having me in the building, man. Yes, sir. Yes, Glad sir. to be here. Dope, this is dope. dope producer. I'm stoked right now, man. I'm going to tell you why. Okay. <laughs> so, listen, man, me and Stroud go back a long time, Way back. man. Like, we we kind of came in the game around the same time. Like, when I first got to Atlanta, it might have been like 05, 06. Yep, around that time. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And Stroud was, was you might have been an intern or something. I was definitely putting up posters in the streets. That's what it was, man. And so, I used to go over. This was back when, like, Narden B, Stroud, all them boys was basically – like intern slash engineer slash just hustling over at Grand Hustle. Like yeah, yeah. they like they, they hadn't had the, they wasn't quite household names yet. I knew it was coming though, cause they was in the studio with everybody. Like all the all the Grand Hustle cats was fucking them like like little bros and big bros type shit. But but I just remember, you know, cause I was I was out hustling too. I was just you yeah. know I'd walk around with a camera. Yeah. I, I niggas didn't even know I was doing beats. We didn't even I was know. Always, always in the studio with a camera, man, just trying to find my way into the into the lick man but i connected with these boys we all had something in common and next thing you know you look up stroud out here dropping these bangers next thing you know non-b they take off out yeah, they killing it right they killing it bro yeah. so this is this is really dope for me man to see this to how this happen right now man so thank you for coming to the show bro i appreciate you having What's me up, for sure. you having so where are you from originally Right here, born and raised in Atlanta. Nice, nice. Okay. Who are your uh, influences musically growing up? Man, for real, I really don't know, man, because I had so many, man. Like, I, man, some of everybody, man, for real. Like, I love music, so, I mean, you know, my influence came from, from anything, you know, from every, everybody, you know? And that's something because it makes sense because going over your discography earlier today, your production is like, it's a wide range. You it's know, up, it don't have like one particular sound. Some stuff sound trappy, other stuff sound like orchestra with all kind of instruments. And it's like, wow, I'm like, am I on the right? You know, am, did, up, did right? I get to somebody else's SoundCloud by accident? Right. No, it's just produced by <laughs> Stroud. Right. Yeah. So I could see like the diversity in there. So where did that, you think that came from? Just from listening to different stuff? Um, I mean, just kind of, you know, just understanding and loving music. When you love music, like, you know, you're not going to get trapped in a box. Mm-hmm. You know, and, um, you know, I mean, that's really just where it came from. Um, you know, I, I I've always loved, I've loved R and B, I've loved rap, I've loved country, I've loved gospel, I've loved everything. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's not a genre of music that I didn't try to listen to. Yeah. So, as a producer, I always felt like if you gonna be a be a, a producer, you need to be able to do everything. Like Quincy Jones, like he was orchestrating big bands. You know what I right. mean? So right. Yeah. At the end of the day, like if we gonna produce, we gotta produce. That's right, for so, sure. You know that's yeah. where that's, that's where dope. it came from, really. Yeah. So how'd you get into production? Did you, did you grow up playing any, in, any instruments? Or? So I grew up playing drums. Okay. I grew up playing drums. And, uh, like, man, I was working at Delta. Okay. And, um, and a friend of mine, um, a friend of mine, Atiba Jones, is a producer. Actually, a friend of mine, uh, my best friend, Justin Gilbert. He actually, he's um, he plays keys for uh, Justin Timberlake right now, right? Okay. Mm. So um, he was working on a project. Okay. He was working on, like, one of his first albums. And, okay. um... This other producer, Atiba Jones, uh, was working with them. Okay. And uh, we went to the studio one night, and I was like, man, you know what? I'm about to quit Delta. And I quit the next day and just said, I'm a producer for now. And that's how I started. No. That's dope. Can you talk to us about that transition? Like, did you struggle at all? Oh, did I struggle? <laughs> <laughs> did I struggle? <laughs> like, man, that was, a, that was the dumbest move I ever did. But, <laughs> but that was the smartest move I ever did, too. But, like... Right. Like, it's funny because, like, when I'm talking to people and, you know, people are like, man, I'm about to quit my job. I'm like, for what? Right. Are you stupid? What are you quitting <laughs> right, for? They right, like, well, right. you said you quit. Right. I'm like, yeah, I did, but <laughs> <laughs> I want to get my job back after two weeks. <laughs> Shoot, you go a few days without eating, but it's going to get real. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Like, I mean, man, one of, the, one of the things I love about you, man, is um, I always see you out. You know, like I know, I know you do your, I know you do your grind in the studio. You you stay working on beats, but something I always noticed about you, man, was you always uh, are out networking, man. Like I mean, I've been to the hoodest shit on the south side, to the most swanky shit in Buckhead, and I run into you. 
I mean, man, you gotta you gotta be out. You yeah. know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, three stacks told us you don't move your feet wet, you don't eat. Come on, man. Mm-hmm. So, what are we know, talking about, man? Yeah. So you know, at the end of the day, like that's what that's what it is. Like, you know, uh from the money to the south side to the like you said, to the matches and, and, and bucket, like yeah. they all, all that money spend the same. It's so do man. I want all of it. That's right, bro. Ooh, we, I like that. Yeah, I, I like that, man. Yeah, that's dope. So uh, like relationships, man. Can you talk to us about that? Because I know that like you're one of the most respected guys out here. Like everybody, yeah, man. Everybody man, knows. Somebody, you, I, I gave you a dollar early to say you, that. You did, you did. I took that dollar. You gotta go. But I mean, <laughs> matter of fact, that, ain't that how you kind of tagged yourself? Everybody knows Stroud. Yeah. So like, all right. So when, all right. So the way that ended up even coming about, man. Like for real. Like um, when I first got the Grand Hustle, um, they put me and another guy. Um, Billy, they put us together, and our production team was called Two Band Geeks, right? And uh, we did, like, all the, like, the young L.A. stuff, the black boy, white boy. We was doing all that kind of stuff, right. right? And um, and Billy kind of just, you know how it is when you're in the music industry? Sometimes you can fall out of love with music. Right. He fell out of love with music for a second. And yeah. Like, Man, I don't think I want to do it no more. So that just left me out there. Mm. It left me out there. You know, Tip and Doug and everybody said, you know, Clay, everybody said, well, what you going to do? I want to keep producing So they said cool So You know We was uh, Thinking about like Production tags And all that kind of stuff And you know Doug was telling me Now I'm being in New York And I'm at this office And how does exec know you and, Right And you know Clay said Man I'm over in the hood And this person know you And somebody said Man this person know you So And then you know After a while I started being a thing Like man everybody know you bro So you know I was uh I was listening to the radio And uh My engineer champ Was riding in uh it was a uh, Travis Porter record came on. Mm. He said, everybody knows Strap. And Chad was like, man, that's your tag. Everybody knows Strap. There it is. So I was like, man, you know what? I'm going to see what Run Doug that. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I was like, I'm going to see what Doug and Tip say about it. And yeah. yeah. when I told them, they was like, you know what? That's you. That's because everybody, no matter where we go, yeah. like we'd be in the office and somebody always asks, hey, how's Strap doing? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're like, how do you even know these people? That's what I'm saying, man. I feel the same way, bro. That's that's it's real about that. It's real about you that's on that tip, up, man. man. Uh, so when you so you came in, man, like you from the A, you made your way in the Grand Hustle, man. Like, how did you build those? How did you build it though? Like, um, I mean, I I realized for real, man. Like, you know, I, I started trying to think about life and think about like, um, you know, how different people make it in life, mm-hmm. and I started realizing that, you know, CEOs of companies. They had these big major companies, and then they hired their homeboys. So I realized, like, sometimes people not even qualify for, for positions. Yeah. But because of their relationship with somebody, that's how it they go. keep them in the game. And, you know, I've always been told, don't burn these bridges. So I just, once you start really, once, once, once you quit your job, and you go a few, few days without eating, and you, your car break down or you know what I'm saying you run out of gas you start thinking about different things that's right and so I start thinking like man these relationships are very important yeah so you know it would be situations where Jason Jeter would have me playing records for people right mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm in a room playing rec- records for people like, like for G. Robinson right and at the end of the day that's a relationship Doug told me when I first started he said man if you be seen but not heard like you gonna get somewhere so I always want to be seen, but not really heard. You know what I mean? That's and right. From there, facial recognition, that, exactly. all that work. Game. So you know, at the end of the day, it was a situation where you shake their hand. You, Jason G, to bring you in the room. They don't know who you are. That's all they know is yo. You my came guy, in with Jason. <laughs> yeah, right. my guy just came in with this, with this guy. You know what Free I mean? Free game, bro. So at the end of the day, they didn't know who I was. Right. But but but, but that visual cosign exactly. was so important. It made you important. Exactly. Immediately. Exactly. Yeah. So I realized that, and I realized, like, all right, cool. When I'm in the streets, I need to shake these hands. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm in the rooms with them. If I shake the hands in the room, I'm not going to do it when I see them in the streets. That's right, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, yeah. And um, just realizing, man, a smile and, and a handshake can go a long way. Come on, bro. Free game. Free game for yeah. real up in this thing. Free game. Free game. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we like to ask, like, if you could give your younger self any advice, like, would you do anything differently? What would the one thing be? Um, I would put out more records. I would put out more music. I wouldn't, I wouldn't chase the money. Where I messed up at yes. is my first beat I ever sold was for twenty five hundred dollars. Yeah. 
while mo- while your average producer in the first beat he ever sells is like fifteen twenty dollars. Like yeah. he begging somebody to buy this beat. Right. I didn't beg nobody to buy my first beat. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, to be honest, I was I was kind of like yo, like y'all giving me this much money? Right. Like twenty five dollars. Like that was a lot of money to me at the time. Yeah. Like, no, no doubt. You know what I mean? So, um, I would I would invest into artists and and tell them like yo, don't worry about this money. Put this record out. Because if it's a hit record, it's a hit record. Yeah. So those records that I probably did four or five years ago. That took off my hard drive. That <laughs> could have been probably a hit. That you know could have made me some, some more money. Right, so, right. You know. Was that the thinking behind your, uh, like your EPs or projects you put out? Like the. Oh, um, you know what? To be honest, the EPs and, and, and stuff like that, like, that's all, it's been like a lot of my friends just saying, yo, I want to do this or do that. And like, me, I feel like if somebody gonna believe in me enough to do it, then let them do it. Yeah, you know. Right. So, um, you know, that's that's how all those really came about. Okay, like those not like me personally just put the project out. It's like DJs and friends saying, "Yo, I want to do this. I want to do this," and they'll just take records that I had come out, put it on another, just repackage it up. Nice, it. yeah. Nice, nice. That's dope, man. Now, before we uh, officially started recording, we were talking about your work with uh, Young Dro. Yeah. And he's one of my favorites. And my he's favorite one of too, Your man. favorites yeah. as well. Yeah. And he's so creative. I was asking about producing. What is it like producing him? And, uh, you know, what do y'all got coming up? So, producing Dro is like, to me, like, man, it's, it's, it's a crazy experience, man, because... Because I got a lot of work together. Yeah, we do, we do a lot of stuff together. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like... You ever heard somebody can rap so good, <laughs> he make you cry? <laughs> like, yeah, like so. he'll be in there crying, like, because <laughs> yeah. Dro, like, sometimes he'll bring them songs out with that pain and yeah. emotion. Yeah, yeah. He be like, man, bro, you just rap too good, bro. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I remember one song, man. He, he, he killed it so bad. I called my mama, like, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was playing his song, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, but uh, but yeah, man. Like, Dro, man, he's incredible, man. Like, he's somebody that I, <laughs> me personally. I would put him up against Jay Z to rap. Yeah, I know a lot of people are fight me about saying. Nah, that, I, w- I would. not I think he that dope too. He can rap, man. He can rap mm-hmm. for sure. He can rap. You know, really, 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 the whole, whole Grand Hustle Hustle Gang squad. Everybody over there is incredible. They fire, man. Right. You know what I mean? Everybody's over there incredible. Like, you know, and you know, like I said, Dro's my guy. We we about to work on some new projects. Nice. We got a new project we get ready to work on. And uh, nice. And yeah, you know, and it's funny. I actually just got Dro now into writing. I don't know if I'm supposed to tell him, but he's writing for other artists now, too. Yeah. Nice. So right. If you hear any verses that any sound verses like Dro, some, it yeah, might sound like Dro, you <laughs> <laughs> might have wrote it. Yeah. So. yeah. That's crazy, man. So do you are you uh, into songwriting as well, or do you just uh, um, so produce? With songwriting, man, um, I mean, I'm not, uh, I don't write whole songs. Yeah. I'll, you know, I give, I give some good lines, one or two little lines, give my input, but I'm yeah. big on I'm, I'm big on making sure a song is, is solid and yeah. making sure the writing is solid. Like, I've always wanted to, um, I've always had songwriters around me. Yeah. Um, just because I feel like uh, without without these words, then I just have an instrumental. Facts. And I'm not out here selling instrumentals. I'm not right. out here selling the instrumental CDs. I'm not selling the jazz album. Yeah. We selling records with right. songs. With people on nice. so, yeah. yeah. You know, for me, I can't get a young Dro in the studio every day. I can't get a T.I. in the studio every day. Yeah. Sometimes they got to go out and do shows and be on the road. But guess what? When they come back, I'm like, yo, they go 10 records. I just had these writers write. Listen to these. Tell mm-hmm. me what y'all think. You know, um, I mean, same thing. Just any artist. You know what I mean? Not just my Grand Hustle family. Just with any artist. Like, you send the records out to these A&Rs and all that kind of stuff. A lot of times, they want songs. They don't want, they do. right. they don't want just a beat production. Right, for sure. So, you know. That's yeah, that ninety percent of the placements I ever got were song based. They did I hardly <laughs> ever just sent a beat and it just worked. Yeah. That only happens when you got the opportunity to like be in a room with a with an artist. Then the beat makes sense because that because then the songwriting process is about to take place. Of course, but yeah. but usually, yeah, send them just a the beat. They yeah, like well, I'm beat. supposed to do it. This. You know, and then you know, it just it just works out better because even if um, a lot of times even if the artist doesn't want that song. Because you had something on there, it inspired them yeah. to do something. That's right. So, like, even maybe they didn't take the song, but guess what? Because the stuff that was on there now, oh, I know what to do on this. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, you can pass yeah. that idea on. Exactly. Right. They yeah. say, I know what to do on it, and at least they're going to record, because at the end of the day, 
goal is for them to record to your project. Right. I mean, call, record to your song. Right. To your beat and hopefully put the song out. Yeah. That's right. Perfect game. Yeah. Yep. How do you um, develop that trust with your artists? We talked about this before we started recording as well about you producing Young Dro again and how you have trust with him, but you know, and how he doesn't let, let a lot of producers produce him. How do you like develop that kind of trust with an artist? Well, with Dro, um, with Dro, you know, I mean, developing the trust with Dro for real, is, I, I'll just say not even Dro, anybody at Hustle Gang, you have to understand that this is years upon years of mm -hmm. like relationships, you know, and like, you know, when you talk about Hustle Gang, you talk about the tips and the draws and all those people, I. I look at those people like my brothers for real. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know we've we've all been through so much together. So, uh, you know, after a while, it's it's kind of a little it's a situation like that's my little brother, and I, he said this is this is good. So I'm gonna try I'm gonna try something for him. You know, because of our relationship of, of that brotherly situation. Um, but with just any other artist, um, the way I would, the way I get. The trust with other artists is more so just letting them hear and see what a project or what a song could be. Okay. I've had plenty of artists that, uh, just rappers. I say, yo, let's try to do some harmonies. Like, if you singing on auto tune, like, come on, if you sing, you might as well try to do, if you're going to be an R&B artist, be an R&B artist. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, so if you're going if you gonna do it, let's try to do some harmonies. So, you know, I show them like, hey, you can do that. And what I do is I sit there, if it takes 30 minutes to get this one note right, it's cool because once people hear it on the record, it's gonna be that much more magical. Yeah, yeah. Nice. What uh, without giving away your sauce, but like, what kind of like uh, hardware and software you like to use? I mean, look, man, I give everything away, man. When when a producer come to me and say, "Stroud, can I have some sounds?" I tell him pull out his hard drive and I come give on. my whole hard drive. Yeah, come on, man. That's you know what, what I'm mean? talking about. Like at the end of the day, the way I, the way I use my snare, he gonna use the snare totally different. That's and at right. At the end of the day, I feel like when producers don't. Look out like that. They ain't yep. doing nothing but holding music back. Yeah, yeah. They holding yep. the culture yep. back. And um, you know, I don't, I don't know, cause I wasn't, I wasn't there back then. I was definitely wasn't even born. But I'm pretty sure when, when your Marvin Gaye's and your Stevie Wonders and your Donny Hathaways when they was creating that stuff, they weren't selfish with each other. I don't know, but that's how I feel. Yeah, no, nah, music is to be shared, man. It's meant to be shared, I feel like right? It's meant to be shared in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. So. so you know, but I use Logic, man. I use Logic. Hey. Uh, and uh. Boo. Logic, logic man. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely a logic user. I, I, I love That's logic, dope. man. Um, logic, send me a check. Uh, <laughs> right, right. But um, but nah, that's really that's really the only thing I use, man. Of course, when I'm when I'm recording vocals, I'm using um, Pro Tools. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I love using all the Universal Audios. Yeah, you for know? sure. Um, so like my, I definitely got a UA preamp, and I do have an Avalon also. Nice. But um, I mean, just man, like for real. Crazy part, man, and it's gonna sound so cocky, man. But for real, if it make a sound, I'm gonna try to use it. You gotta use it, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I know most producers are probably coming. Oh man, whatever, whatever. Man, I be trying to beat on the wall. I try to do everything because, you know, it's just about a vibe. Yeah. Facts. As long as it's a vibe, then I'm gonna try it. Right. That's dope. Sure. So how do you promote? This? Do you have like management? How do you, how do you promote yourself out here? <laughs> well, see, that's the that's the funny part. I don't really try to promote myself. Um, I don't really try to promote myself, uh, and the reason I don't is because I'm actually a very shy guy. So like, you know, like when I see somebody, like when I see somebody, I'm like, hey, what's up, Stroud? People don't even know me. I'd be like cringing on this side. Oh, what do I do? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm a very shy guy. So it's hard for me to promote myself. That's the producer's creed, bro. We all that way, bro. It's like yeah. what, man? Uh, all right. Exactly. <laughs> but like, uh. You know, I, I got a guy named Jason Billy. He has this thing called Pro Level, um, Pro Level Photography, and uh, it's a branding situation. And, okay. Uh, so he does like amazing stuff. Like he does like quotes. And he knows I don't really like taking pictures, so he'd catch me at the time and take a picture, and I'd be yeah. like, "Oh man, when did you even take that picture?" You know, like he's just amazing at that kind of stuff. Okay. So, the branding part is really the my guy, uh, Jason Jason Billy, and so uh, I believe he might be on Instagram it might be like pro level photography I'm just hoping to say okay yeah 
Yeah, because yeah. your Instagram looks very intentional. Like, yeah. It's really dope. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, it does. That's what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> Jason be doing his thing. Speaking of that, uh, let everybody know where they can follow you at on all social media. Um, so you can find me on Tinder. You can find me on <laughs> Christian Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm playing. Yeah, man. I'm playing. Yeah, come on. <laughs> I'm playing around. But it's uh, it's <laughs> at everybody no Stroud for everything. Okay. Any any social media thing is at everybody no Stroud. Matter of fact, my email address at everybody no Stroud at Gmail. Nice, nice. Well, we, this is a double interview, but, but we got something else. Well, I was just gonna ask, man. Do you collab? Do you, uh, you know? Listen, man. I do everything. That's what if it is. they want to work. Matter of fact, I, we want me to tell you. you want me to tell you when when I was asked, hey, can you come on the podcast? Do you want to know what I said? What was that? What did I say? Uh, yeah. If if you do a beat collab with me, come there on, man. Let's go. It's so done. Will Power, you next, man. We got to collab. You get a beat collab by everybody in this room. Let's you do it. Let's do it. Man. I'm with it, man. <laughs> I'm with it. I love music. I want to do it. Do it all. I mean, I'm just, you know, from a, from a homie place, man. I'm really glad you came through, man. You man know. I'm glad I'm seeing all this stuff, man. You got fabric on the wall, man. Come you on, got... man. I'm trying to come up. <laughs> Look at this wood but on the wall. We baby. come from the same thing, bro. You know how yeah. it was, man. Grand Hustle really inspired me before yeah. before I really got in the business the way I wanted to be. I used to go there, and that's what I was doing. I was learning. I saw how Jason them ran the studio. I saw how all the homies was working. You know, I'm from the country. I came up from South Carolina, so. Pulling up on this, and you know, I, my eyes was big. You know, uh, at the time we had the big homie. I think we was working with Alpha Mega at the time. Yeah, so, he was man, killing Alpha stuff. And I just was, you know, luckily I didn't know him that well, but he brought me in to come meet everybody. And all I did was make friends out of yeah. all these boys. So yeah. I was. You know what's crazy? When we would see him with the camera, right? And then it was, uh, they was like, "Yeah, Will, you know, Will Power is booking the session." So I was like, "Oh, okay, cool." And uh, came in, we heard him making beats. It was like. <laughs> bro, you make beats. <laughs> like, it was so hard. We was all like, everybody was upstairs. We was like, hey man, go downstairs, check. So we was all peeking in the room. You know what I'm saying? Like, like trying to see if that was him doing that, if yeah. it was somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> nice. We was like, man, what in the world? Like, bro, what you doing with that camera, man? It like, took a long time to even get up enough nerve to play beats in there, though, because all of them was so fire. I'm serious, man. These was all the brothers, man. I would come in, we just hang out in the kitchen and yeah. shit, just. Yeah. So yeah, this means a lot, man, that you came through, bro. Like, That's and I, up, I think man. the dopest part about it is that we both seen some some success here. Yeah, definitely. And I know definitely. this is just the beginning of what we doing, man. Definitely. So, but we gonna make this lock in happen. Mm-hmm. Now that you done been here, yeah. I can't, they ain't I'm no coming to the lock in. I'm coming dog. to the lock in. <laughs> Let's get it. I want to produce with everybody. I want to. I want to produce a record on everybody. Everything. Exactly. All right. Well, yeah. I'm gonna tell you what. Here go the invite right here on the air. We doing. I'm doing a writing camp okay. on the eighth, ninth, and tenth this month. Um, I'm sorry, uh, February. Okay. So next weekend. I'm here. We're going to hit you, pull up. It's going to be like 30, 40 writers in here. I'm here as long as I can use Logic. Oh, you can use Logic. <laughs> I used to be on Logic. I'm just a hater now. I'm on Ableton. They be hating around here. I'm oh, on Ableton. Ableton next is the truth, though. Let's go. Ableton is the way. Come on then, man. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> like, like I, can't, I can't front. I might end up putting Logic down. For I'm going to tell you. So, oh, no. Okay, so listen. Just this producer no, seriously. talk. Okay. This producer yeah. talk. Because I was on Logic for 15 years. Y'all know that. That's yep. what I was doing. You know? right. I would not break Logic, bro. Yeah. Until I until somebody who used to use Logic showed me how to use Ableton. Mm-hmm. Now I'm just like, I love Logic, but Ableton does everything that Logic did three steps faster. Yeah, that's what everybody keeps telling me. That's it. And other than that, it's all good. Like, you know what I'm saying? I still miss like some of the built built in stuff. Like I don't got the EVP eighty eight. I missed that little keyboard that was on that thing. It's some sounds that Logic had that I was just like, damn. But you can still open them up and get them out of there if you need yeah, to. Of so that ain't nothing. Yeah. So yeah, man, but let's do this, man. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Awesome next. We always ask this. Uh sometimes I forget but when I ask a top five producers before you get out of here. Uh top five producers. Off the top of your head. Top top uh, five. <laughs> Tiba Jones, Keith Mack. Ooh. Um, DJ Toomp. Yes. Sure. Shawty Red. Timberland. Nice. Come on, man. Strive. Thank you so much for we coming got, to the show. Got two I thought y'all was going to ask me some hard questions. We do. Yeah. That's it. We do. Yeah. yeah. I thought y'all was going to ask me some hard questions. Y'all ain't asked me that. <laughs> That's all good. Five good favorite me. rappers. Dro, 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 <laughs> and Dro. <laughs> yeah. And Diddy, too. Diddy, send me a check. Come on with it. <laughs> like, this is all producer. We don't we don't get into, like, silly stuff. This is all information. No, I get it. I get it. Producer, you know. Mm. 
you know, so we just want to get good information. And, we, and you, we had some, a lot of game. If y'all listening, I hope y'all got a lot of game because he was dropping some gems on y'all for real, for real. Oh, for real? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. For all of us, I see how Linda looked at you a couple questions. Like, oh, you know, we all, when we interview, we get game as well as the audience does. Like, I yeah. get a lot of game. I mean, man, right. you know how it go, bro. We all in this, and we still students. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, of course. the way I look at this is, you know, for every producer we've ever spoken to on this show, it's like they come in with their own set of, set of rules. They all got their own stories. It's a lot of similarities, but the truth is, you know what I'm saying, like, we was in the same building, Definitely. experiencing the shit differently. Definitely. But it still came out successful. It yeah, still yeah, yeah, is yeah. what it is. So yeah. that, that's what this is about. Yeah, you might be you might hear something that resonate with you, you know, or, or might be similar. That's why I always ask where you from, you know, what are your influences? Because somebody might hear something that is similar to they come up when when they were coming up. So you know what? I got to take it back on one of my producer situations. I got to put Dr. Dre in there somewhere. Don't throw him in there. Dr. So Dre got- is. Three of the five on the wall. Yeah. Yeah, Dr. Dre can't. is like next level. Yeah. That's yeah. next level. And, and you know what? It's funny. I hate I even named because like it's so many people that I'm like big fans of. Yeah. yeah. Like so many people. I'm just yeah. a nerd. I like lists. I'm a, I'm one of them nerdy people that like making lists all the time. So I just yeah. I expect what you yeah. It's all good, man. I dig, it. I dig it. So yeah, so we're gonna see you this weekend. Of course. There it is. Okay. Free, game. free game. My man. Peace.